joining us right now to talk about it is Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy Morthy of Illinois. He is the ranking member of the House China Select Committee. And Congressman, thank you, first of all, for being here. What, what did you think of China Week on the Hill? Well, thanks so much for having me. I think China Week was weak on China. I think that it was notable for what it did not address. Uh, nothing to significantly address the fentanyl crisis, uh, nothing on critical minerals, nothing to repair our industrial supply base, and nothing to enhance our competitiveness, such as by fixing our immigration system or upgrading the skills of our workforce. So it was a big missed opportunity, Becky. Why? What, what happened? I think that, unfortunately, Speaker Johnson did not try to adopt the bipartisan approach that our committee has adopted with regard to these issues. Look, the, this is not lost on the Chinese Communist Party. They believe that we're hopelessly partisan, hopelessly divided and tribal. And so uh, we have to play against type and come together on a bipartisan basis, united, uh, you know, with regard to our approach on these central challenges. And unfortunately, this week, um, the House Republican Caucus took a different tack. What, what happened? Because in the past when we've had you on, there always seemed like there wasn't a lot of daylight between you and the Republicans on the committee. Um, I think that what happened was, unfortunately, uh, Speaker Johnson decided to adopt certain proposals that just did not have support across uh, Congress. Um, and, and by the way, that included among even certain members of the GOP. Um, and so because of that, I think that we missed the opportunity to, for instance, you know, advance meaningful uh, issues such as uh, outbound investment uh, controls, um, as well as uh, restrictions with regard to um, other issues where, unfortunately, the Chinese are benefiting because of our lack of action. And so we have to take action now. In, in terms of that, um, you think that this is because it's an election year? Do you think this is you know, not, not just an election year, a couple of months or 60 days, less than 60 days till the election? Uh, I'm shocked uh, that, uh, you know, people would think that an election uh, somehow influenced what's happening. Yes, I think that's absolutely what's going on. I think that, unfortunately, um, you know, Speaker Johnson has taken the approach that he wants to try to uh, adopt certain policies that, uh, might curry favor with the GOP base, but that don't have widespread support in Congress. And when you don't, when you don't have widespread support in Congress, you can't get anything done. And again, the Chinese Communist Party benefits from that, and I hope that we can take a different tack going forward. Well, let me ask which candidate you think the CCP would prefer to see in the White House come January. And, you know, I, I would say... China has probably, the, the Chinese Communist Party probably has not been thrilled with anything they've heard from either of these candidates. But I have heard the supposition that perhaps they like the idea of Trump there less because the tariffs he's talking about would be higher and there is an instability factor. Uh, the CCP doesn't really love instability in, in looking at its, uh, the nations that it competes with. Well. So there's a, uh, a famous book called America Against America, which was written by a guy named Wang Huning. He's kind of one of the top uh, seven advisors to Xi Jinping in the Politburo. And his theory about America deeply influences Xi Jinping's theory of America, which is that we are hopelessly divided. And so when Donald Trump pits American against American, uh, whether it's Republicans against Democrats or whether it's one, you know, ethnicity against another, um, that plays into, you know, China's theory about why we uh, ultimately will not be able to compete against them. So I think they like Donald Trump creating chaos or instability here within America. They liked January 6th. They liked the fact that uh, Donald Trump helped to instigate that. And so um, I believe that they would favor Donald Trump across the bargaining table relative to them. Um, I think that the Biden administration has taken some really tough positions, especially with regard to um, uh, controls on uh, outbound investment, controls with regard to the export of key technology, uh, which they deeply, deeply uh, don't want. 
um, as well as increasing our deterrence in uh, the South China Sea and with regard to Taiwan. So I think that all things being equal, I don't think they would be very enthusiastic about Kamala Harris becoming president.